for all. I'm trusting all adults to keep their eyes open and also their minds open. Okay, because I think we're going to have a great set of speakers and um, I'm sure many more will be walking in because we had quite a bit of disturbance even last time. I'm hoping that people come before we start the session. But thank you uh, so much for being such great audience in the morning. There was a lot of interaction. I hope the same spirit uh, again takes over. Over to you, Lakshmi ma'am. It's your chopal this time. Thank you. So we have, uh, shall we get the four chairs on the stage? I think we are four, three, one, two, three, yeah, four, 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 yeah. Oh, bus. I, I don't need to sit, I will sit there. Or you, yeah, I think I'll just give the, yeah. Hmm? He should be in the firing line. Huh, yeah? Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah, that side, yeah. So we have Anirudh Gupta, where is, sir, please come. Yeah, CEO of DCM Group of Schools. Uh, we have uh, Mohamed Azhar, yes, founder principal Knowledge Academy School. And we have dear friend Anirudh Sachdeva, director Holy Child Group of Schools. And we have Pramod Sharmaji, vice president Genesis Global School. Please take your seat. I won't come in the middle at all. So we are going to talk about enhancing employment and entrepreneurship, uh, the hot topic for schools, especially how do we get the entrepreneurship essence in, you know, today we're talking about from kindergarten to grade 12, and also how is it going to impact skill development. So I gave you some pointers. Uh, via our WhatsApp chat, but feel free to bring in your own uh, perspectives, your insights, because you're all very, very practice-oriented leaders. So over to you. Yeah. Shall I get more? Thank you so much. Thank you, Amrita, and uh, thank you, Lakshmi. So, uh, Kind of setting the context, you know, what we are talking about and eventually discussing about. So, uh, friends, as we all know, we are the biggest K-12 segment in the world with almost, you know, 1.5 million schools, 14.69 lakhs to be precise, 260 million school goers and with almost 40 crore population, you know, below the age of 25. So why this topic is relevant, why it is important and what we're here for and why, you know, this probably has been chosen as one of the points of discussion. So, so it's extremely important for us to take care of this 260 million school goers, the future workforce. And it's more so relevant because we are in a VUCA world which is volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. I mean, one day you are a prime minister of a country and second day you are a fugitive. So we just saw uh, in the last three, four days, so how the things, you know, they, they change, how uncertain, how volatile they are. Nobody could apprehend that, you know, this something like that could have happened. So, yeah. <laughs> So, so that is the way the world is evolving. So, uh, so the future of jobs, I mean, probably we are still not sure of what kind of jobs our students which are in our school today are going to land themselves into. The businesses which we are going to see a couple of decades down the line, probably they have not been invented yet. So, so it's extremely vital. Thirdly, you know, uh, if you see the vocational education and training uh, segment in the country, our country today, and I was reading, going through certain reports that 85% of the schools are still not prepared or they are not doing it the way they should have done it. Fine, so, so it's more of a still, I'll say, superficial kind of an effort which is going on. Vocational education has been introduced but still not get embedded into our system. Another issue, you know, um, uh, is that, you know, um, India is a land of diversity. 
fine we have diverse classrooms we have schools you know which is being run by a municipality or by a trust to a school being run by a corporate school not for profit school pro profit premium school budget school and if you see the classrooms also especially the kind of schools we've been uh, running all these years so we have you know like first time learners in a classroom we have you know kids from affluent families so there's been social disparity digital divide and uh, um, over the years you know the way the pedagogies should have been evolved you know they are still redundant you know we've yet to see transformational pedagogy in many schools in our country and uh, also you know uh, this teachers training because the teachers can deliver what they have been trained for fine so the kind of teacher training scenario where you know like something like non attending b ed is still going on fine the government is still not clear i mean uh, they have introduced this cet and you know eligibility test also uh, and all but in the morning we were talking about that you know not so bright children coming into the space of realm of school education and you know aspiring to become uh, teachers and professors and you know getting into research so this is the backdrop that why you know this topic preparing students uh, from school to work is important so we all it's it's our responsibility because schools are not just to complete a curriculum and you know provide them a degree schools are social organizations they are community organizations so it's imperative upon us it's it's the onus is on us that how do we make them future ready how do we align them with the needs of the industry it's not that there are no jobs in india i think uh, um uh, i was reading there are almost 110 million jobs across 24 sectors fine why the industry is looking for a skilled manpower fine they are all the time you know um, crying that we are not getting skilled people and the youth are talking about lack of employment opportunities so there is a we need to bridge this gap we need to work on the academia industrializing and in fact you know um, from school to higher education tertiary education to the industry this entire journey we have to ensure is seamless it's effortless so so what has to be done fine given the fact that we have almost 260 million school goers we are in vuka world you know we are uh, having the kind of diversity i was talking about you know with the uh, curriculum not yet aligned you know the pedagogy is not yet transformed so so i think uh, uh it's it's more than anything else i think more than other aspects in the school education we are talking about you know the school to work and entrepreneurship is more important also uh given the fact that you know if we have to really uh you know work on uh, the mission of make in india we have to work on the you know 5 trillion dollar economy if we have to take india in the league of developed nations fine if we have to really make india atmanirbhar in terms of space healthcare technology fine semiconductors i think uh, the mantra catch them young fine in the recent olympics you know somebody was asking me why chinese and japanese and you know uh, all these countries they are getting all the medals and we are happy with uh, three bronze and one silver you know with almost 160 crore Uh, the, the biggest you know uh, youth force in the world so so we have to start early we have to uh, inculcate an entrepreneurial mindset right from the formative stage itself right from their career progression to right kind of pedagogies to uh, you know having the right kind of the academic environment we have to see that these days it's not about marks it's about making a mark even all the industries they are not looking at your qualification or how much percentile did you score they are looking for what value they bring to your company and you know what skills they are bringing so so uh, i think uh, i can talk about you know uh, industrial licensing you know internships we are talking about in the morning so there are lot of ways and uh, by the way i'm i'm happy to you know share that we have set up probably india's first school of entrepreneurship for kids which we have named it young entrepreneur school and we've set it up in ludhiana so it's called yes school and uh, we have spent almost 4 years in devising the the curriculum you know because we were very 
mindful and cautious that we are not going overboard you know talking about entrepreneurship is as early as grade three was a big challenge so what kind of curriculum what kind of activities what kind of exposure to the job markets you know follow your dreams so a lot of programs have been initiated if time permits i'll be talking about it so i think uh, uh, we are on the right track all of us are interested we are talking about it and i think this is the first step and uh, uh, we all have to take it forward. Thank you. Yeah, that's really fantastic because talking about uh, setting up an entrepreneurship school and uh, actually starting to give some kind of a curriculum direction is fantastic. Uh, Mohamed Azhar, for you, the next question is, how does one get the li innovative life skills initiatives for young people and especially along with the initiatives of digital literacy? So how do you kind of put these uh, on the two sides of same coin? Good. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, for me, uh, what I'm seeing is the life skill. Uh, uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is all about idea developed by the child by for us to solve the problem of the society. Now that that attitude, that mindset is developed through life skill. And in our school, what we do is we have a life skill classes where we uh, we take that as a lab, and most uh, seventy percent of the curriculum is on dealing with the people. Like how do you propagate that cause of your solving the problem to the people and face the challenges of it? And that is one uh, one aspect we have uh, theory classes. When it comes to practical, we do uh, uh, deploy our children in the practical. For example, uh, we have uh, uh, ICAMs, local ICAMs, societal problems. We are taken up by the children, organized by the children every month on a different uh, aspect of the community, different areas of the community. They volunteer and they go and uh, organize it and get the data done and that uh, ICAMP or medical camp, whatever camps we organize, that has to be translated into so problem solving so this is number two in developing their life skills what is the, the, the number two number three what we do is the challenges what they face now uh, uh, since this idea of entrepreneurship developing their mindset through life skills and this idea itself is a new to the society especially parents are not okay about it or parents are new to them so that, that they have the challenge when going to convey to the parents, okay, I'm going to do this project or I'm going to take this idea and solve this problem of the society. The parents come up and why do you want to get into this? Why can't you focus on academics? So that kind of challenges has been uh, addressed through life skill classes where we engage them in, in the conversations and see what we can address them through, uh, 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 through the ch children. The fourth thing which we will we'll talk about digital literacy. When we talk about digital literacy from our grade... Uh, KG, we give access to all the gadgets, but in a controlled manner, and uh, we make it. We follow the policy of bring your own device, where the children bring their own devices from grade eight onwards. Grade six is optional, but grade eight onwards they have. They should have their own devices, and with that, we develop by the by that grade eight, they are very clear in how to operate designing Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and and we have Canva also in our school. They design their own uh, uh, newsletter and they also design their posters, video editing, graphic designing, everything comes from grade eight was they are equipped by that time. So that kind of literacy is given over a period of grade three to grade seven and grade eight they are uh, to uh, develop their self and we have children who do internship in that uh, aspect of graphic designing. We have a children who is, we have, we offer IGCSE as well as NOS. So we have a child who has done NOS but he has developed his own website, newsletter and he's published to that and he's into mass media and journalism. So that's how we uh, develop the digital literacy as well. I think that's a fantastic integration. I mean, I'm impressed that with NIOS curriculum and also building those skills. And uh, I think what you mentioned about building the readiness in parents you know because everything is all about why not focus on the academics not realizing this is actually part of the academics so that comes to the question for you Aniruddha uh, is the how do you kind of build this whole ecosystem in the school from designing I'll give you my mic designing and implementation and that actually can build the youth ready for a decent workforce so how do you do that uh, in terms of designing it in the school level? 
Yeah, first of all, good afternoon, and I hope after lunch I can see everybody is awake, eyes are wide open, and uh, thank you to the co-chairs. See this vocational. Uh, before I speak on this, because Mr. Gupta has said, uh, has set the tone by, by, by explaining everything that you know why it is required. I come from a background where I have uh, been in job for six years with a multinational company. Then I have my own industry also. Then I'm into school also, and I'm into few panels of universities also. So I can see that there's no seamlessness at all between all the four stakeholders. Schools they have a different thinking, different style, monotonous style. They have their challenges as well that you know they have to complete the syllabus, and you know they don't have even trained teachers to teach the thing. We are expecting them to teach vocational things, right? So how a teacher who has an academic background and uh, not having that grasp of vocational, what is vocational is all about, and we are expecting to teach. That's a challenge. I'm not saying that schools are not doing it, but the way it should be done, it is not happening at all, right? Then universities also, the whatever the curriculum they have, they are not producing the, the output which is industry ready. Now when I say not ready means even if a guy, if the candidate who is applying has a content in the mind he is not able to express and you don't have the like in a thickly populated country like India you don't have a selection round you have a elimination rounds so in the first go you eliminate the the, the way the student uh, the applicant enters into your office you have you develop your you know mindset whether this person will be able to or not able to even in schools when we take the interviews right a person sits how he talks and generally when you ask for the introduction like introduce yourself they have the set tone which they used to do it in their classes right i am this i am this i am from this so these are all the challenges so coming to your point ma'am now the time has i think time was uh, had already come no, but the time has come that you know we have to integrate with the society as mr azhar said that you know we have to orient the parents through success stories of the entrepreneurs, not just by giving the lecture. We have to orient the students because entrepreneurship is something like, as Mr. Ajay again said, that you know, it's a mindset. So when entrepreneurship comes to a student's mind, it comes at like, you know, so much of money. But what kind of struggle will go into that is not uh, told to them. So when I started my business like uh, from a zero investment, I know what kind of struggle it was 20 years back. But if I tell the same story to the new generation student, they will say, okay, we will not go for that. No. So now comes the arena of funding. Because that time, 20 years back, there was no funding kind of concept that time, as far as I am concerned. Now how to generate the funding, how to create the new ideas. And for that, school is not sufficient. The school infra is not sufficient. The school staff is not capable enough. We have to integrate with the experts. We have to get the experts from our own alumni if the school is old. We have to integrate with the local entrepreneurs. We have to look, We have to integrate with the laboratories of the industries which are nearby you so that students can visit. Like for example, when we take our students to our nearby industries, the kind of change I see just after the orientation of two, three hours is completely different. Now, they, then they start imagining that, you know, okay, I, I want my cabin to be like this. Now, what should I do? Like, for example, when you tell anybody to study overseas, mm -hmm. so the backward integration starts, so the backward processes, you know, they get into that mode. So as a school, to sum up and to take care of your time also, we have to, first of all, draw the skills which, are, which we know as of now that, you know, are the future skills the globalization aspect, the digital literacy aspect, the empathy aspect, the team building aspect, the money generation aspect, how to think about new ideas, every aspect. And then we have to follow that as a curriculum. And then we have to assess also. Because just merely by introducing entrepreneurship throughout a year, if you are not following it up, it will not lead you anywhere. So, for example, inter you know subjects you can have the uh, uh, learning from that you can develop some you know you can start like a school magazine so you can set up a budget you can s you uh, through your filmmaking trainings through your video making trainings 
a team building approach money generation for you know by by convincing the local business people for investing as a as a advertisement in your magazine but you don't do it yourself you put the students in that picture so that learning will start so this is just a peanut uh, i would say similarly for when you do the exhibitions you can you know auction the stalls but yes give the money back to them <laughs> not to keep the money with you so they can generate they can you know they can look up to what kind of raw materials are there how to purchase and then they can correlate like you know if a shopkeeper or any vendor is selling to them whether they got a good experience or not so how a businessman i should be when i'm talking to my client so there are so many things to so struggles continuous learning hand holding and then well guided approach through experts in the schools will be able to help very, very yeah holistic and a lot of concrete examples also no i think now it's your turn so i won't take the mic from you i know i wanted you to also speak a bit about uh, women in science because that's one area that we really constant uh we've been struggling with this despite all our achievements and girls education but when it comes to finally understanding the statistics women in science and women in stem seems to take a some kind of a back seat and i think it's it's a puzzle that we are not able to completely solve though we know that uh, there are a lot of societal norms and expectations so i thought i would also ask you to speak about it a bit but i know you have your own question and you want to answer that before yeah thank you very much uh, yes like uh, uh, international day for women and girls has been declared in science has been declared as on february 11 feb 11 is the day which is celebrated all around and the idea is the need is that uh, there is gender disparity in various careers various organizations and uh, in our life when i if there are two people married to each other and uh, they have to decide which career is important mm. only one career can be you know and i think 90% of the time the woman sacrifices her career and this is happening throughout uh my wife is very resentful that why did i allow her to sacrifice her career but that is the way of life that has happened all the time and in this this is not only happening in india but this is happening in developed countries where uh, where colored women have do not have that much rights in developed countries as the others so there is a need for the world to think about this and what is the way out i have no idea but this is a concern which uh, is being shared by united nations general assembly and so this is what uh, i was supposed to inform but while on entrepreneurship the topic being discussed here i i thought i'll tell you about what we did about 15 years back uh, today there's talk of of uh, you know a uh, lot of startups and this that 15 years back there was very little we started a school and asked each school each class to have and to be associated with an ngo had a social service officer and that social service officer would connect to different ngos uh, uh, children with cancer the old age homes and all kind of disabilities and so uh, this was happening and at the mean in the meantime we started cambridge and in igcse there is a subject called enterprise very few schools in that time about 10 years back were doing enterprise because principals are scared we are comfortable in our position why do we start something called business in the school how do i allow my children to get into business this is unfamiliar uncomfortable territory for most of us so we started that and this the interesting part is in all those children who opt for it 
you have to make a company with five children. So one becomes a CEO, one becomes marketing, one becomes cash, and all documentation to be done properly, and all record to be kept, responsible behavior expected, and all this documentation is sent at the end of one and a half year to the Cambridge to give award a grade. Just like physics chemistry, this grade will be awarded. So when this started, so the students will make a business plan. And uh, in this business, then the business plan will be presented to the principal. Principal will say, yes, this particular product gels with the philosophy of the school. This does not. We don't sell aerated drinks. So you can't have a, any aerated drinks. You cannot have sugar-rich product being sold in the, in the school. And so all that, if it gels with the philosophy of the school, it is fine. And the school will give you a loan, a cash flow to, to, to and this loan you have to return with 10% interest. So responsible behavior. You understand that yes, it has to be returned to the school. So this carried on and after this first year was over, the children came back to me and said, uh, well, apart from 10% interest, we have generated this much profit. And what do we do? So one clever guy said, should we have dividends among ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you have to put this money separately. Think of a charity where you want to spend. So you know how one thing leads to the other. And so... One time, the students went to Sindhya Girls, came back to me and said, uh, sir, sir, we want to have a word with the promoter of the school. I said, sure. So we organized a talk. And the children said, we want to start an affordable sanitary napkin unit just like Sindhya Girls has. So what do you want? We want a room. So I said, OK, take in the basement. There is a room. You have that room. And do this. And uh, how much money? So we, uh, ma'am, we haven't come to you for money. How come? We have money from the, which we have to spend on charity. So they had money already. And, you know, so this is one of the happiest stories that the children knew how to save. Children could connect with the charity and enter and entrepreneurial skills they were already getting all the school functions they had their stalls selling their products they were marketing during the lunch time during the break time they were offered this this and uh, it was working beautifully so another story is about uh, some girls going to a going to a government school they went to the government school came back to me said uh, sir it was horrible i said what happened the children were sitting on chatais, you know, in the government school, chatais on mats, cane ke bane hue, and uh, there were insects crawling on the chatais, and the children were sitting. I said, what did you do? Uh, we picked up all that, and we dumped them outside the school. I said, OK. Then we sprinkled water, and then we swept the floor, and it is now absolutely clean. So I said, OK, well done, good. So now what? Now, sir, before the children come tomorrow to the classroom, they will have wet, cold floors to sit on. So we need fresh mats. So you now you help us to buy fresh mats, get them and put get them put before the children come, or we will be there when they come, so that we can put this there. I said, where is the money? Money there. So this is the success story, which brings me a lot of happiness and joy, this kind of thing. So th I thought I will share it with you. And uh, the question I was given, which was given to me, uh, do not think that uh, I have not come prepared. I did my work. And, and I am not one of those true ants. And I have written all written down. But it wasn't coming from my heart. So I thought I'll make my own. Well, I think, you know, entrepreneurship with ethics yep. yeah. and entrepreneurship with values and entrepreneurship with commitment for social cause, I think not, we couldn't have asked for anything better. Any uh, thoughts, questions from the audience? Yes, please. So, this is all of yours. So, as you said, ethics and values and entrepreneurship. Uh, so, before I say that, I wonder if all of your speeches were creative. Today, reality is not that. Honesty is 
the best policy, you have to be ethical, your value. But he goes out and he sees his father giving a bribe to the Pope Hop to get away from the thing, you know. And that's so, it's such an integral part today that, you know, when I was giving uh, something, the cop was asking, he said, the fine is 3,000, you pay me 500 and it is done. And we were going somewhere, so I took out 500. And my daughter from the back said, you're bribing daddy? You're bribing? Is this called bribe? Then I said, I, I immediately I got caught. I like, no, no, dear, that maybe I'm giving something. No, you're lying to me. It's a bribe. Don't do that. <laughs> Pay the fine for it, you know? So where do you draw the line? Because then it becomes very difficult to run a business. If you say, I will not give bribes. So, yeah, this is a question. Yes. Yeah. So first of all, you know, um, it took us a lot of effort to sensitize the students and the parents that entrepreneurship is not just about business and making money. And making money. Uh, creating an entrepreneurial mindset across the spectrum, whether you want to become a lawyer, architect, pilot, entrepreneurship is just in the life skill. It's a mindset. So, so even the parents, when we launched this school, it was a huge risk that you know, school of entrepreneurship, and people used to ask whether it's a K-12 or a higher education. <laughs> so, so I mean, you know. Parents in India are also shy of divergence. They are looking for a very, very safe, a very better doctor, banna, engineer, banna, you know, in uh, m most of the Bharat, it's still prevalent. So, so creating an entrepreneurial mindset and, you know, like uh, what, uh, 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 like Mr. Mr. Pramod was talking about, uh, we have children, you know, from grade 6, 7th and 8th. They already did some pitching in Hyderabad recently and a lot of them have already, you know, initiated their own startups. And uh, they are, they even got some seed money and we've set up an incubator and accelerator in the school itself. So, so I am sure that in a couple of years down the line, you will see some of the youngest startups of India. Coming to what he was asking, you know, uh, yes, you know, these social levels, corruption, nepotism, they always be there. But I mean, um, exposing them, the children at this age, you know, talking about, yes, we do talk about failure and we say failure is a first attempt in learning. In fact, we started a program called Fail Fast. Fine. So, so I think uh, we have to tread cautiously. We have to, like we were talking about, you know, ethics, we are talking about values and, uh, you know, um, we have to uh, make, you know, work on their endurance. Fine. Like if you go to somebody and somebody is asking for bribe, I mean, how to deal with it? It's, it's more of, you know, like smartness, endurance. But we can't tell them at this point of time that if there are 30 regulatory things to be done, so you pay the bribe, I think that will be. And, you know, we are not, we are just creating their mindset. We are conditioning them. Fine, if they are uh, ending up having their own startups, that's excellent, you know, that's, you know, icing on the cake. But still, I think they have a lot to learn. I think eventually, they, as they go on and go forth in higher education, and eventually they get into the market, they learn all these things and I'm sure they will learn how to deal with it also. You know, because in our country, you know, the society teaches you so many things. So I think um, um, that's, let's, let's do what we think is right for them. So the problems will always be there. Yeah, maybe a quick response. Yeah, please. I would like to add uh, one thing is, uh, we have seen people, those who are in corporates, but without ethics is gone, gone for a toss. So entrepreneurship without ethics is going to doom their life. Yeah, case studies. So, yeah, one of the things which we do in life skill classes, we, as uh, he said, uh, Anil also said that children, it, they will face this. Even for a small startup, these bribes and everything. But what we, I do when we in our school, we do is they come to us in the life skill classes and we'll deal with them. And no compromise on their integrity, no compromise on ethics. If we are going to do that, then we are, we are creating world-class criminals. So, yeah. Madam, uh, I would uh, just request both of you on something else. Let him do like, for example, we had 25 people sitting in this room, so maybe 25 school leaders, right? Each school, as I said, has a limitation in thinking as far as this vocational or entrepreneurship is concerned. But if we make a cartel or some group or maybe in some manner where, you know, all the ideas are poured into, then whatever is feasible for any school can, you know, they can take that lead and do that. So this way, at least this 25 set of schools will do and then they will add more because 140 crore population, it's just a few steps. These are just few steps and we have a lot to do yes. that way. Thank you. Thank you. I think we would be right.
running out of time. One last word, sir. No, no, yeah. just last word about since the life skill was being mentioned. So I was wondering that what is the percentage of alcohol in wine? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? So what I'm trying to say is that we talk about life skills. Do you teach your children what are the percentages in different alcohol so when it time comes they can make an informed choice? You don't. Why are you well, shying you know, away? If you start talking about it, then there will be like, are we really promoting them? No, to, it's not promoting, you know, no, but no, no. They, you um, need yeah. to inform. Yeah, you that's need to inform. Yeah. As a chemistry teacher, none of my students have passed out without knowing what are the percentages in each alcohol. So that, and... Or rather than telling him this much percentage of alcohol is not good, rather than telling him that wine has so many, such a percentage of alcohol. But unless you... If he is forced to have a forced to have a drink, at least he can make a choice of a soft soft <laughs> beer and a hard beer or whiskey. So he doesn't know what whether he should have whiskey or. And the okay. second part, le, take a step further. Take a step further. Take a step further. What to do with the hangover? Time will also come. Time. Time will also come when he will have to make a choice whether he should do chemical or organic, must inform. Yeah, and also time will come whether he should really bribe or whether he shouldn't bribe. Because I think, you know, some of us know that we have also established schools knowing what are the processes that we have, we could follow and what are the processes that we had to circumvent. But I think thank you for that reality check. Thank you. Thank you so much for this lovely... And let's teach our children to say no. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I just come.